Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash, and welcome to another exciting podcast interview. I'm here with Aaron Baldwin, Chief Product Officer at Automotive Mastermind. And today we're going to talk about their important role in helping dealers and dealer groups build out the right foundation for their CDP and how their experience in this field helps them to be an ideal business intelligence and marketing activation partner. Let's get into it. Aaron, welcome to the show. Brian, thanks so much for having me. Really excited to talk about this. You know, Aaron, uh, let me set the stage for all the dealers who are listening and even members of the vendor community. When you think of Automotive Mastermind, you may think, okay, um, equity mining, uh, OEM program offers, uh, buyback programs. But what you didn't think about, and this was kind of a light bulb to me, um, what Automotive Mastermind is, is a very focused customer data platform for dealers with specific marketing activations. Aaron, when we work together uh, early on with the Morgan Auto Group, with their customer data platform, our biggest problem was how we were we going to keep the data clean after an initial cleanup. And I remember the conversation you and I had, and it was like, hey, Brian, you, you know, the majority of the Morgan stores use us and you know what you're talking about. We're doing for our own product. And it never dawned on me like, oh, that must be why the mastermind platform is so successful because you're verifying vehicle ownership, you're doing the change of address, you're doing the proper data hygiene. It almost feels, Aaron, like that was the secret sauce maybe that dealers never appreciate it. I, I think it's a great point, Brian, and it's a part of the secret sauce, right? I mean, if you think about automotive mastermind at its core, we're predicting who's about to be in market. And in order to run that prediction and to have that type of business intelligence and predictive analytics, you've got to be sitting on the best foundation of data in order to make those decisions and to make those predictions accurate. Um, so running all of those processes that you just mentioned had to be foundational to us and built into our core as a product to make the rest possible. You know, and for dealers who are thinking about a CDP, let me also set a little groundwork because there's a lot to talk about today. A customer data platform's primary job is to unify the customer records that are spread across the CRM, DMS, maybe um, a, a marketing platform, a phone log, a chat log. And once that data is unified, it's really up to the dealer to decide how they're gonna activate. What are they gonna do with that data? And another piece, aside from the hygiene, we're gonna come back to it, is that CDPs don't know loan rates, OEM programs. They don't know what vehicles are the best trade up, right? Their job is to unify the customer data. So really where I see Automotive Masterminds playing is your years of business intelligence, modeling, and prediction connected to a dealer CDP allows the dealers to really have smarter activations, not just for the things that you do, but for all of their marketing campaigns, right? Because in an ideal partnership, you're sharing those signals with the CDP. I don't think dealers completely understand how powerful that is. Masterminds does what it does best, but Masterminds isn't doing social media. It isn't doing streaming or uh, CTV. It's not doing Google ads. But imagine when you're doing what you do best, direct mail, email, prediction, scoring, and that updates the whole CDP. Aaron, do you think dealers are, are, are able to grasp that thought of bringing 10 plus, 15 plus years of data management and analytics and plugging that into their CDP? 
I think some are and some are. Some are getting there. They're going through this journey and they're understanding the value of their first party data and where the gaps and the holes are in it. Um, I was having a conversation just this week with another uh, major dealer group who's been on the path uh, of CDP for a while. And one of the things that we had talked about, very specific to, to what you just mentioned on the activation side, even inside of their own environment, they have trouble executing on the true one-to-one -one communications, which is something that's foundational and core to us as well, right? Our predictive marketing is, as we'll believe, it's uh, the best in the industry, right? But, um, right. but it's powerful and very strong because there's hundreds of thousands of variants associated to it. Um, so when we were having this conversation, this, the, the realization that we came to is if they use it for those digital channels, social media, CTV, OTT, um, you know, connecting to Google ads, et cetera, and have that one to many communication that wraps around what our direct one to one is, it's a very elegant picture and it's something that they can easily execute on it. And then they get all the goodness from the rest of the data that we're processing to them. Um, so one, it's about the channels, but two, our predictions aren't just at that surface level of what people know as the behavior predictions or that core BPS. You made the mention of uh, CDPs not knowing programs or pricing data. One of the elements that we carry in our system, which we call the deal score, um, very specifically says, how likely is this person to purchase uh, or replace their current vehicle with this vehicle at this deal structure? Um, so having that greater degree of understanding of where this person is in that journey, what can your discounting strategy be as a dealer in order to drive more people into market while retaining gross profit is something that, uh, that is made available and made possible through our different, uh, our different prediction scores um, that, again, aren't part of our core use case that are unlocked as part of uh, the broader CDP execution. Yeah, so that's, let's roll it back. Yeah. Let's take one step at a time because I want to make sure that dealers understand this. When dealers start a CDP project, they have to ask the vendor, what's your data hygiene process? Are you bringing in DMS and how long? Are you bringing in CRM and how long? Um, are you bringing in daily signals from your phone, daily signals from the shopping actions that consumers are taking on the website, right? You have to figure out, okay, what is the data that I'm going to be bringing in? How do we initially unify the data, right? And that has to be really done carefully because Brian Pash could be in the DMS spelled two or three different ways because I could be brain sometimes, which is kind of prophetic, and um, Pash with an E or Pash with a, uh, you know, uh, missing a C. Then... I may have bought a car seven years ago and have since moved. So this core data hygiene piece, uh, you handled that for Morgan Auto Group, which include identifying the customers that no longer own the vehicle, where they currently live, what are all the phone numbers and email addresses associated with that. So when we started the CDP platform, we had the most up-to-date data. So Aaron, if if people are not aware of S&P Global's data relationships, um, phone quality scoring relationships, just give our listeners just a little overview why you are an ideal partner, not just because of the data hygiene, but for the whole package. But let's focus on the data hygiene. What data do you have access to that helps make this possible? Yeah, that's a that's a great point, Brian. And I, I appreciate you bringing it back a, a few steps there. So as part of uh, S&P Global Mobility, um, we have a very powerful data set through uh, Polk Automotive Solutions, through Automotive Insights. Um, we had a recent acquisition of MarketScan uh, for pricing data. Um, and so as part of all of these collective groups, we have access to just a tremendous amount of information. So the sources of some of those information uh, of this information, government uh, data uh, that we're bringing in when we're you know proper stewards of that data, that's really what helps us understand, does this person likely still own this vehicle? Yes or no. 
um, and actually seeing potential changes in registration and uh, and also you know more broadly auction data. Um, a vehicle could change hands as part of a trade transaction and in, in the auction end up in the auction cycle for 30, 45 days. How do we make sure that we're bringing in that fresh information to understand where this vehicle is and if it was turned in, even if a registration didn't occur? Um, so that gives us a very broad picture. But as far as other information um, that we are collecting uh, as a broader organization, um, we have uh, demographic, sociographic, and psychographic information on all uh, U.S. households at the census level. Um, we track all uh, vehicle owners in the United States as well. Uh, and so we have a very broad depth of understanding of every household that, that is out there. In addition to that, we're appending this with uh, multiple different other types of data sets that help us understand financial profiles, um, that help us understand, uh, you know, different information about these consumers. And, you know, uh, it, it kind of does go back to that demographic side, but, you know, I'll use myself as an example. Are there new dependents in the household? So does that change the profile of the buyer from saying, okay, maybe a mid-size SUV worked until now, and you're now in the full-size SUV or, or the right. main category. Um, but these are the types of things that we are bringing in and, and, and helping to understand. We're also bringing in direct OEM data in a lot of instances. Um, so, you know, this could be anything from understanding, you know, recall information. This could be, um, you know, understanding of program data, like we mentioned with, uh, with market scan and understanding how that, uh, that, that picture structures and looks. And then we're also generating our own data. And when I say we're generating our own data, um, you know, we, we do private incentive optimization for Audi financial services um, and, and a couple of other OEMs uh, in the industry where we're actually generating these private offers to help pull customers into market and help move more metal. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of data that's, that's at our core that we're bringing in and stitching together and unifying as part of this. This also includes multiple identity graphs that we're layering together. To understand is this the right phone number for somebody is this the best contact information is this the best email address do you have marketing permissibility to this email address um, right. and then connecting that all into federal you know compliance do you are you layering in national do not call registry and understanding what that picture looks like and how existing business relationship logic applies to it and if you're allowed to call this person so um really making sure that there's that comprehensive understanding of who is this individual? How can I contact them? Where can I contact them? And what am I going to contact them about? You know, I think if dealers understand as they shop for CDP, many of these companies don't have that level of sophistication, that business intelligence, that data merging. And what Automotive Mastermind is moving in the marketplace is to pull alongside of dealers who are investing in a CDP and say, look, let us get your data clean and let's start with a clean slate. Then as we are doing our direct mail and email and our OEM offers and private offers and upgrade offers, we're going to update your CDP with these valuable signals that we've developed over a long period of time so that your marketing agency can do other marketing like you mentioned, you're a one-to-one -one marketing, a CDP definitely allows for that. Sure. But then you do, you put people in audiences. So you create awareness. Now, one of the other things that uh, I don't think dealers completely understand unless they really are working the CDP, as soon as the data hygiene is done, the things start to fail, <laughs> right? Uh, people move, um, emails bounce. And so one of the other cool services that are not now you know coming to market through your uh, team is this idea of I call it a self-healing CDP if the CDP sends you a signal hey this email bounced or hey this phone number is bad um, you can get that signal do the data hygiene update the CDP so that we're not saying Oh, I did the, the hygiene three months ago. Hey, I better do it again, right? It becomes self-healing. And what that means is that valuable customers don't slip through the cracks mm -hmm. if, if the CRM, the marketing automation partners, 
the phone texting platforms are telling the CDP when data fails. That's the key. But if they do tell it, then you can trigger hygiene. And I think that dealers don't understand how fast data goes bad. I know um, for the Morgan Auto Group, we just looked in a 90-day period. I think it was 32,000 vehicles in 90 days across the group no longer were owned by those customers. That's 90 days, 32,000. You know, they either sold the car or, um, you know, traded the car. And I was like, wow. When you think of, and of course, that's a larger dealer group, 70 plus stores, but it all adds up, Aaron, right? Because one-to-one -one communication marketing offers all depend on one thing. Does the person still own the car? Where do they live? And how can I contact them? Yet the average dealer's DMS is 40% inaccurate. Uh, CRMs don't have and DMSs don't have uh, mobile numbers. I mean, it's like, is it time that dealers are going to take their first party data seriously and, and get a tool and a partnership like with Automotive Mastermind to keep it clean? What do you think? I, I, I hope so. Right. And I think that um, at least what we see on our side, I mean, if, if I were to rewind um, you know, five to 10 years ago, and look at buy sells of dealerships even right let's go all the way back to you know buying and selling of stores there would be instances where a dealer would come in and purchase a new store and would lose all of the first party data that existed from previous ownership that should be part of that buy sell agreement so that it's being through but we are seeing more sophistication in these m a events where that rarely happens nowadays. Most of the time, that is part of the deal. It's being transmitted. So I do right. think, that even at its you know at its core foundation, the value of owning that data, keeping that data, and having it is being seen as part of M and A transactions. Now, long term uh, strategy of storing and nurturing and making sure it's clean. I think that's the next stage, which Morgan Auto Group is is on the forefront of and um, and developing that strategy out. But as you start to talk to more and more dealer groups, it's becoming more uh, more front of mind that this my first party data is an incredibly valuable asset, and I need to treat it as such. I need to take care of it. I need to run maintenance on it. Uh, I need to run these hygiene processes on it to know that you know, in fact, this person still lives at this address. To your point, right? Um, you know, and all you you talk about um, how fast data changes. Um, you know, we saw in the initial cleansing um, uh, for for Morgan that forty percent of the vehicles inside of their DMS had already changed ownership. That's right. Uh, but then I think about even using as myself as an example. Let's let's look at the email side of things. I carry three email addresses: um, one for promotional, one for personal, and one for work. Well, that promotional one I delete. Every so often, <laughs> right. it's away because it's just it gets unruly for a, for a bit, right? Um, so understanding that that happened, it I mean, it, some people that that's a every six months, you know, twice a year kind of kind of mechanism for them, um, just to make sure that they're keeping their inboxes clean and understanding what's really valuable to them and what are they mm -hmm. really be aware of. I love that. You know, I, I want to try to reiterate this again. I don't care what CDP platform a dealer chooses, right? Uh, Morgan picked Telium, but whether it was enterprise uh, treasure data, uh, uh, Salesforce, or you know any of the others at the enterprise level, or what I would say, custom automotive, you know, full path, full throttle, activator, um, client commit, whoever. You can work alongside any of these CDP because you can do the initial hygiene and then through API integration, get those signals from your scoring system into the CDP and get those broken, you know, bounced emails, bad uh, mail addresses back into your system for hygiene. And I see some confusion in the marketplace would say, look, if I have CDP, I can do all my marketing. I can get rid of this vendor, this vendor, this vendor. Just, I just want to be very clear. CDPs create audiences 
of consumers that are in different phases. They can be fed into Google. They can be fed into Facebook. They can be fed into a direct mail vendor. They can be fed into an email marketing vendor. That's the power of the CDP, real-time audience. But you still have to have the content, the offers, the personalization, the calc engine, the predicting scores, and that's not part of a standard CDP. That's where Automotive Masterminds comes in, is that Automotive Mastermind has proven its ability to predict, has proven its ability to deliver attractive offers that people respond to. So don't try, I'm talking to the dealers now, don't think, don't let your ego get in the way. Don't let your thinking say, I get the CDP and man, this is going to transform my marketing activation. What it's going to do is it's going to transform your communication capabilities. It's going to transform your marketing capabilities and possibilities. You still have to find the right partners who can activate. And, and Aaron, I think maybe dealers think it's simple. Oh, I can do what Mastermind is doing. But, you know, when you look at those offers and they're one-to-one -one offers and they're calculated based on what the current vehicle, the customer owns and their probability of being back in market, that's not what Google does. That's not what Meta does. That's not what 99% of marketing agencies do. They just don't have the BI. How do we make that clearer? that running a retargeting ad or a general offer or branding, anybody and their brother or sister could do it. But when it comes down to one-to-one -one calc offers based on current OEM programs, DMS data, mileage, market value of the vehicle, that, that's a whole different animal. It is a completely different animal. And I think uh, hearing you say that, there's prop, uh, it drew a correlation in my head um, and, and rewinding back to my days with Asbury Automotive Group and and um, and doing marketing on behalf of those dealerships, a lot of those general offers you put them out in the environment, right? A two ninety nine lease on a Honda Civic or a Honda Accord, and then the consumer comes into the dealership and says, "Hey, I want this two ninety nine lease," or at BMW, I want a five ninety nine lease on a five series. Well, it's generally built off of a car that doesn't exist in Highline or. <laughs> It has no idea of what registration is, taxes are, doc fees, et cetera. Our system is bringing all of that in correctly. But from a dealer's point of view, to make that really clear, when you have that customer who comes in on that 299 special lease program, yes, you have a hot customer, but there is a walk that you have to do with payment because when you actually desk out that deal, it's probably coming in closer to four or 450. So right. you've got to be able to explain that. To do a true one-to-one -one offer with a true trade valuation, with true payoffs, with all of this data layered in, you're skipping that step. You're setting the right expectation of the consumer so that when they come in in response to that offer, they're ready to go. It's an easy deal, one pencil. Yep, we're going to sign up for that offer that you have in your hand right now, and let's get that car down the road busting the bugs. I love it. Uh, and and this type of conversation is new for most dealers. Um, they've never had to manage their first party data. They've never had a word about data hygiene. They never had the ability to append third party data in their DMS or CRM because those were not the tools designed for that purpose. But a CDP is. And at the Modern Retailing Conference, we are inviting dealers who wanna do more with their first party data to come and learn. We have the top CDP platforms there. We have the leaders in marketing activation, like Automotive Mastermind, but who are also evolving their product stack to line up with progressive dealers who are investing in a CDP and need help with data hygiene, need help with business intelligence, need help with marketing activation, and man, no one, period, no one in the marketplace right now is doing more to help dealers embracing CDP potential than Automotive Mastermind. That's why I encourage dealers who are listening, don't wait for MRC. Reach out to Aaron, reach out to your local Automotive Masterminds rep and set up a discussion 
about how they can help you with your CDP project. Of course, since I have experience and I'm not selling their product, if you want to ask how my experience was or the kind of um, roadmap to making decisions on when to use data and when not to use data, of course, reach out to Aaron or myself because here's, here's the truth. The dealers who truly unify their customer data, keep it clean and append it with third-party signals have a competitive edge. And then you combine that to real-time signals, knowing when your customers are back in the market. And what we're looking forward to is sending to Mastermind those people who fall out of the normal predictive bands and are back in shopping. You're going to be getting those signals to update your algorithm, right? Because look, somebody finds out they got a promotion. Maybe they go into market. That's hard to predict. Somebody has a baby, unexpected, as you mentioned. Hard to predict. So I love this partnership, Aaron, because you're going to be getting real-time shopper signals to let you know when Morgan customers are back in market. You're going to be predicting very accurately um, when they're coming back and what to uh, offer. I see it like as a two-way road that we can both get better together. Is that how you see it? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think you nailed it. Our job is to predict who's about to be in market and to help drive them into market. Sometimes we miss somebody who maybe talked to their neighbor and that's what triggered them to go into market and we can't predict that, right? But getting that signal back makes us better, helps us understand what is the profile of that person, but also increase our BPS scores in real time on what's happening on those dealer websites. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a whole new age. And the reason why this is possible is because the CDP was designed, ideally, right, to be a real-time signal uh, repository. And now for the first time, dealers have a repository that they could actually send to their better marketing activation partners so everyone gets smarter. You know, Aaron, if a dealer who's listening in today, who's kind of going down this CDP path or wants to do more with their first party data, what's the best way for them to get a demo? Where should they go? Who should they call? Yeah, um, they can go to the automotivemastermind.com website um, and fill out uh, our contact forms or give us a call on our number on the website. If you know your local Automotive Mastermind rep, um, please give them uh, a call or you can uh, reach out to me directly. Um, I believe that uh, if it, we may be able to post it, may not, but uh, my email address is pretty simple, abaldwin at automotivemastermind.com. I know it's a lot of characters, but it is still relatively simple. Um, yeah, and and reaching out on LinkedIn is another you know way as well. Uh, Aaron's uh, very active in uh, checking those communications as well. And dealers, I want to encourage you that the Modern Retailing Conference isn't just about CDPs. It's the theme here is how do we elevate the car buying experience? What are the new tools, the new strategies? We're gonna be talking about how AI can fill gaps in sales and service process. We're gonna be talking about how personalization can come on websites and through marketing when you have a CDP in place. We're gonna be talking about new workflows, um, new marketing strategies, new customer engagement strategies, all part of this larger picture of how do we get better at doing retailing and using all the tools that are available. I want to encourage you that this event sells out every year. I'm not hard selling it. So um, snooze, you lose. Go to modernretailingconference.com and get your tickets. But more importantly, book your room at the beautiful O Hotel in Palm Beach. It's a beautiful hotel. The weather in November is amazing, but the hotel block sells out every year. And then when the hotel block sells out, room rates double. And I'm not exaggerating. It's high season in Palm Beach. So um, make an effort to bring your team out to MRC to learn from the leaders, the owners of the companies, the C-suite executives like Aaron come to this event because they know of the high level discussions and deep conversations that are possible when progressive dealers and the vendor community get together. And now we're having a new era where we really can partner together on a technology platform. So this is an interview 
uh, amongst a series of interviews of all the people who will be at MRC. So if this is the first time you're listening to this podcast, just search the Brian Pash podcast and look at all the interviews I've done and will continue to do leading up to the Modern Retailing Conference. You're not going to want to miss the conference. If you can't attend November 17, 18, 19, well, then listen into the podcast, see which companies and services pique your interest, reach out to them and let them know that you heard it on our podcast. Aaron, I'm going to give you the last word for dealers who are, you know, on the fence, still thinking automotive masterminds is limited to an equity mining tool. What would you say to them to uh, motivate them to pick up that phone and reach out to you? Yeah, it, uh, hopefully part of this uh, this conversation helps out on that. But um, if if that's what you think we are, please spend some time, get to know us a little bit better, get to know our behavior predictions for we are looking at far more than just the equity position of a customer or the maturity dates. We're helping you understand how to best maximize your first party data and your marketing spends um, to really take care of those core loyalty customers. Great. Love it. And that is music to dealers' ears. Everyone's looking to do more with less spend and to do more with their first party data instead of spraying and praying out in the marketplace. And um, well, our conversation today is perfectly timed for dealers who are looking to do just that. I want to thank everyone for listening in. Remember to just search the Brian Pash podcast. Listen to all the interviews as we lead up to the Modern Retailing Conference, November 17, 18, 19 in Palm Beach. I hope to see you there. Aaron and I will be there and we're going to have a great discussion on maximizing the utilization of first party data. Thanks for listening in and I'll see you next time on another podcast interview.